Bank earnings season is still raging on, and so far, so good. Deal volume has been solid. Same goes for trading activity outlooks. Not so bad either. Amidst this backdrop, Stiefel stock has hit a record high. Let's talk all about it with Stiefel's chairman and CEO, Ron Krushevsky. Ron, always good to see you. Know, I was thinking uh, briefly, we haven't talked much about the infrastructure package this week. Uh, how big a you know, economic driver do you think that will be if it does, in fact, get passed this year? Well, when you your previous guest talked about all the things that are happening in the economy and the stimulus, and we have over two trillion dollars of excess savings, we have almost a trillion dollars of excess business uh, investment opportunity. Uh, you've seen all the numbers come in, and uh, and it points to a very strong 10% GDP in the second quarter. Yet on top of that, we're talking about $2 trillion in additional infrastructure spending. And uh, that is going to have a real impact on the unemployment rate. I think it could push it to sub 3%. Uh, and, the, and then the real question is, is while all this is going on, you have real interest rates that are negative. And uh, while the Fed is, on one hand, trying to get inflation back to over 2%, I personally believe that these uh, set of financial conditions are creating uh, some asset bubbles. I hate to use that word because no one ever knows when they're in a bubble. But there's some, we're really pushing some asset values when you look across the board uh, with what I think is uh, a suppression of interest rates. And then done so uh, really by the Fed on purpose. Ron, to that point, I mean, do you think we're now at the point where investors would be wise to, to reassess valuations and, and maybe stocks do pull back from here? Well, I, I'm not. I, I think that this we're in one of those periods and, you know, no one ever rings a bell to either tell you to buy stocks or to sell stocks. And I'm not uh, trying to do that. But I what I understand and I think investors need to understand is what happens to very, very high P.E. stocks when real interest rates, if real interest rates start to rise, there's convexity to that curve. And you can see some of these PEs get halved. I mean, it halved easily. And uh, I'm just I, I'm just not sure that investors uh, are, are really focusing on the correlation between low, low rates and these high, high uh, growth stocks. And, uh, you know, I think you sort of ignore that at your investing peril. Ron, it's Miles here, and you know this gets, gets to something you were writing about in your annual letter about the role that um, you know Reddit and, and some of these social trends have, have played within the market, um, and you guys have, have seen that play out a certain way in your business. It seems like some of that steam has has come out of of the market just in the last few weeks. Um, but what do those trends signal to you about this phase of the cycle in the context, certainly of, of everything we've just chatted about? Well, I was more talking about I, uh, the. The kind, you know, the con almost uh, convergence of social media and, and investing, and it's and I see a lot of good things about that. Certainly, uh, investor education, getting people into the market. There's some good things, but there was a time there when uh, you know these uh, the certain stocks were really just trading with no basis in in underlying fundamentals, and uh, you know I. I my comment was was that uh, our investors should be careful to not have a fear of missing out uh, on, you know, like the GameStop uh, just frenzy. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's here to stay. I do think it's calmed down a little bit, but there'll be another one. Uh, make no mistake. And Ron, you also write in the annual letter and your peers in, in the financial services industry has weighed, have weighed in this as well. You you're you're bullish on the return to the office. You you view it as important. Why is that? I uh, we first of all we have uh, successfully been able to work remotely. There there's just no question that the technology and what we were able to do. We had a record year last year, record revenue, record profitability. I do feel fortunate about that. But with that times ninety percent of people not coming to work. But I noticed rather early on the cost of that in, in the uh, reduced level of collaboration, spree de core, training in you know, our business, we're an on-the-job training uh, you know, shop. That's, that's how you learn the business. And we have lost a lot by not being together. So I said in our letter that we will come back safely, but make no mistake about it, other than a few situations where we might be able to accommodate uh, someone 
uh, one-off situations working at home, we're, we're coming back to work. Um, the, I think that that is in the best interest of, of really of everyone. Uh, and, uh, and I look forward to that. We're not doing it today, but uh, uh, we're, we're close. And, you know, Ron, in that in that vein, we've seen um, some competitors of yours in the investment banking industry um, have, uh, let's call it, um, upheaval among their junior staff and, and thinking through what people want to do with their careers. And I'm just curious how uh, you've communicated with your staff and, and from where you guys are at today with, again, what's been a challenging period, but one that uh, is hopefully hopefully normalizing soon. Yeah, well, I think that is certainly um the, I've read some of the stories about the hundred plus week uh, hour weeks, and uh, you know I'm certainly hoping that that we're not driving our staff, uh, you know, uh, to to those levels. That said, uh, I, most of the people in our investment bank aren't working forty hour weeks right now. They, they we are very busy, and uh, and my uh, partners uh, are frankly, pretty thrilled to be, to be, have a lot to do. There was, there was a few years ago when we wanted to work 40 hour works, we just didn't have anything to do. So uh, there, there's a balance and uh, I, I don't want to overly, uh, we've not had that issue really at Stiefel about people, uh, you know, complaining that uh, we have too much to do. Ron, you mentioned uh, also in your letter before we let you go, uh, 25 years as Stiefel CEO, <laughs> I mean, you're the only CEO of Stiefel, I've ever known. What have you learned as a leader the past year of the company? The past year, I think that, um, you know, as much as things appear to change, uh, they they remain the same. The issues in the industry, uh, whether it be uh, the GameStop, that's occurred before. Whether uh, the the recent hedge or family office a blow up, that's happened before. Um, markets are very uh, volatile. Uh, people fear and greed uh, will take turns uh, running the market. And uh, you know when you when you really want to understand what might happen in the future, often all you have to do is look back at the past, and you will see that. And I think and I think that's instructive today. Because I do believe we're running into a period that you know, we will look back and understand that uh, that investors bid up some some assets that, and you know non fungible tokens, the digital art, some of these things. We're going to look back and recognize that you know this might feel a little bit like '99, and uh, and we'll say, how did this ever happen? Well, it's happened before. So that's I I just learned that as much as I worry about the future, I get my answers by sometimes just uh, seeing what's happened in the past. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what an NFT is, uh, Ron. Let's leave it there. Stiefel, Chairman and CEO, <laughs> Ron Krushevsky. Always good to see you. Stay safe. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, bye.